Hello, this is Maya Andreasen, and today we are going to go over how to set up models for Substance Painter properly. So the things we will be going over today is how to uh, create a color ID map, uh, where our models need to be in relation to, relation to one another if it is a low poly and a high poly model, and how to export them properly so that we can import them into Substance Painter. So first off, um, I have two models here. I have a high poly model and a low poly model. This is my high poly model, or my low poly model, and it's a simple box. And this is my high poly model, and it is the high poly version of my simple box. You'll notice that both my high poly and low poly version are superimposed on one another. They're basically taking up the exact same space in the 3D program, and that's very important. If your models do not take up the same space in your 3D program, then unfortunately they will not bake properly and they will not look proper once you take them into Substance Painter. So that's number one. Number two, your low poly model is the model that you need to have your UVs laid out for. You don't need to worry about the high poly models UVs. You just have to worry about your low poly model UVs. As you can see, all my UVs are laid out and they're all in this one-to-one -one space. So this one-to-one -one space, as you can see, U1, V1, it's just this one box. Nothing is going outside of the box or the one-to-one -one space. And you'll also notice that none of my UVs are overlapping. Uh, my UVs might come very close to one another, but they're not actually touching. That's also very important too. With your texture maps, um, it's really best to have, uh, if you have a model, you have all of your textures on one map. If it's a really complex model, you might need a 4K map, which is 4096 by 4096. Um, if you do have multiple texture maps, remember you cannot bring in um, all of those pieces of the model together into Substance Painter, or Substance Painter won't know how to apply the textures. So your, your UVs need to be on one map. All right, so what we are going to do is we are actually going to apply our color ID to our high poly um, box right here. So a color ID map is simply setting up different colors to uh, represent different texture types on your model. So let's say you want the main part of the box here to be plastic, you want the trim to be metal, Maybe you want some of these um, extruded areas to be uh, glowing or to be rusty or to be painted. Then the thing that will make it easier to apply these different textures is the color ID map because we can use it to mask out different areas very easily in Substance Painter. So let's go about creating that. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on my box, my high poly box. And you'll see that certain areas of the box are no longer uh, aren't selected. Those are the areas I want to select. So I'm going to hit Control um, Shift I, and that's going to inverse my selection. Okay. So now that the inverse, now that I've inversed my selection, I'm going to right mouse press, and I've got my menu, and I'm going to assign a new material. I'm going to make it a Lambert, and I'm going to call it. Uh, blue mat. I am then going to assign a blue texture to said material. And it should show up. And there it is. So there's my material. All right. Um, I'm going to open up a file where I've already applied all my different shaders. So let's do that right now. And then we can get to baking. All right. So as you can see here, I have one, two, three, four different colors. And these will all represent different textures once we bake out our color ID map and take it into Substance Painter. Now, what does baking mean in terms of uh, 3D shapes? It means taking the 3D information and transferring it to a flat 2D texture. So in this case, we have multiple shaders. If I were to open up the hyper shade here, 
you would see that I have one, two, three, four main shaders and my textures are all applied to them. All right, so I'm gonna make my box high and visible and I'm gonna bring up my box low. I see that it accidentally got the red shader applied to it. So I'm going to reapply Lambert one to it and then we'll reopen box high just to make sure nothing got reassigned there and it didn't, excellent. All right, so now we are going to uh, bake our um, color ID map. So with my low poly box selected, I'm going to go to my rendering menu. So we have this little drop down. I'm gonna to go to lighting and shading transfer maps. In my transfer maps, I'm going to make sure that my box low, uh, my low poly box is my target mesh. And for my source mesh, my source mesh, I'm going to make that my high poly box. So I want the program to source the shaders on the high poly box and put them on my target, which is my low poly box. And hopefully that makes sense. All right, back up in target meshes, I'm gonna change my display from mesh to envelope. And when I do this, that this um, pink envelope envelops my low and high poly box. <clears throat> and the reason I made my high poly box visible is I wanna make sure that that envelope completely envelops the high poly shape. If I put this at one, we would see that I can see little colors peeking through. So I can see little polys peeking through. So um, I had set this already to 1.5 because I knew it totally covered up the high poly model. The reason you want the high poly model completely covered by the pink is because that pink is basically encompassing all of that high poly model's information. And so if it's completely encompassed, it will be able to transfer all of that information to the new texture. All right, so I want a diffuse map. So if we remove this, we can click diffuse. And I want my uh, diffuse map to be saved to my source images file. I don't want it saved to my scenes. That would be inconvenient because um, I'd have to move it. Um, I'm going to have it as a target. I'm just going to, I've already done this before, but I'm going to override it. Do it. We'll replace it. Um, under connect uh, output maps, make sure new shader, connect maps to new shader is selected. And under Maya common output, we are going to make sure that we have our map width and height set. Now I've set it to a 2K map, which is 2048 by 2048. Um, for final maps, you probably want 4K. However, uh, for the purposes of this tutorial, we are going to keep it at 2K and Gaussian, and we're going to hit bake and close. Now I'm not gonna pause the video because I want you to see <clears throat> that you can actually see the progress of the baking. And you can see that over here in the lower left-hand portion of our screen. Now, if you have any windows minimized, so let's say you had your hypershade open and you had minimized it, you would not be able to see the progress. But as long as we have this spinny blue wheel, we know that the program is baking the texture, okay? So don't panic. If for some reason uh, your bake goes awry <laughs> or everything freezes or you feel like it, it's not making enough progress or something like that, and by the way, it does take a while to bake maps, uh, you can always press escape. As you can see right here, it says press escape to cancel. So if you ever need to cancel your bake, all you need to do is press escape and it will stop the bake. And then you can rebake. So let's say you accidentally forgot to push um, an envelope and so you still had it on mesh. And so you're like, oh no, it's not gonna bake properly. I really should have turned on envelope and set that so that I get the proper bake. You can always hit escape change your display to um, from mesh to envelope and rebake your texture. So we're almost done. It just went to 98%. <clears throat> As I said, baking usually takes a while. If we had done a 1K map, 1024 by 1024, it would obviously take less time. If we did a 4K map, it would take a lot more time. All right, so we have now baked properly. All right, so um, I'm gonna actually select 
both my low and high poly models. I'm gonna right mouse press and assign them to my brand new Lambert 6. And box high, I'm gonna make invisible. And then I'm gonna hit six on my keyboard. And voila, look at this, I have a texture. And we can always double check this by going into the hypershade. Go into the hypershade, we see that we have Lambert 6 selected here. And we can see that we do indeed have a texture attached if we look at the color channel. This little black arrow is pointing to what is the attached texture. I'm gonna call this color ID underscore matte, matte short for material. I'm also gonna get rid of all of these extra nodes. So I'm going to go to edit, um, delete unused nodes. All right, and so we just have our color ID matte here. All right, so um, the reason why I did that is typically, um, well, not typically, but occasionally when you import uh, a model, an FBX into Substance, it will include all the shaders that were a part of the file, even if they weren't attached to the model. And we, we don't need extra shaders that we're not going to use. It just clutters up our scene. All right, last thing we need to do is we need to export our both our low and high poly as an FBX file. So I'm going to go to File, Export Selection and it's an FBX. <laughs> uh, do not export it as an OBJ, export it as an FBX. And we're gonna export it as box three underscore low. And we're gonna export our high poly as box three underscore high. So they'll have the exact same names. The only difference is the suffix. All right, so let's export our high poly box. Our high poly box looks a mess. The only reason why is because our UVs are not laid out. And so of course the texture is not going to show up properly on it. It does not matter for the high poly. Do not worry about that. So we're gonna export selection. We're gonna export it as an FBX. And we're just gonna change the suffix here to high. All right, box three high and export selection. And there you have it.